All right, everyone, we got a fun video today. We're opening a Modern Horizons 3 Play Booster box. I'm going to give first impressions on this product. I recently opened a Play Booster box of Outlaws of Thunder Junction, and I was really a big fan of that product. So this is very much like if I had like a list that was like a Jake's list, this would be probably like my go to most of the time over the collector products. Not saying I don't like the collector products, but this for me is much more my style. We can draft with this. We want to get a good idea of the set. This product is going to give us a nice look at that. I like to be able to get a lot of rares and a lot of mythics, and that's what I think these play boosters do. I know that these products, this is more expensive than normal draft booster boxes, but this is the new booster pack. There's going to be a foil in every pack. There's art cards. There's borderless foil cards. There's special guest cards. I don't really care so much about opening commander cards in my packs, and that's a big appeal of the collector booster in addition to all of the serialized cards and special art cards that you can get in there borderless foils but there's borderless foils in here there's a lot of fun stuff so we're going to crack into this and we're going to see what we get special thanks to wizards of the coast as well for sponsoring this video and sending us this product early so that we're able to get these products open and give people an idea of what they're like we really appreciate you very much this box has absolutely already been blessed so let's just go ahead and get into this Lots of in this Dear patrons, without you, we are just a puddle of water. But with you, we are a beautiful frozen ice sculpture of your favorite animal. Thank you. The goal of this is simple. We're going to get a count of how many rares, how many mythics are in this product, and then, um, you know, how many special cards, like special guests, that kind of stuff. This is going to be really fun. I've opened a play booster box of OTJ, like I said. But I've also opened packs of like play boosters of the recent commander product and that kind of stuff. So when you have like a commander masters, I imagine this is going to be similar to that. But I am super excited about this. You know what I want to do? I want to do this. Roll time's sake. Let's go. Let's go like this. We're going to put this in, in there. Wait. Come on. You got to gotta get in there. All right. There we go. Yeah. That's what we want. Okay. Here's our packs. Let's just go ahead and open up. Start on the left. Set this over here. I want to go to this camera for this. Oh, okay, cool. Commons. All right. Uncommons. Static prison. Okay. See, I feel like this is going to give such a good idea of, like, what we can open in here. All right. First rare is a Savine's Reclamation. And see, these can have multiple rares. See, this is why I really, really like this product. It's going to be more affordable than the... Oh my god. Yeah, like, this is heat. This is going to be more affordable than the collector product. I'm going to set this to the side here because why do the Reliquary is one of the cards I'm most excited about. And then, yeah, we have a... Um, whatever this is. I forget what this is called. Double-faced card. And then we have Utter Insignificance. Flash, okay. Just a common. I'm probably going to replace this camera. This is a little bit more lo-fi than what I would want this to be. So, first pack. Three rares. I am into this. Play booster box. And I can already see there's some sort of special art card back there. I'm a sucker for variants. Uncommons, Marionette Apprentice. Crowd Pack Rhino. There we go. These MDFCs, which came to us in Zendikar Rising, have been very, very popular, so I expect these to be good. 
cave. Into a worn power stone. I like this. And a disruptor flute. This is pretty cool. That was interesting. Wait, this is a mythic though. Okay, cool. Into a... Oh! Okay. Yes, we take this. And then the art card. Like I said, there could be art cards in here as well. Wow. Boily Ocelot Pride. It's a cat. Cat multiplier. Actually, this card is very, very good though. First strike, lifelink, ascend. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain life this turn, create a 1-1 one, one white cat creature token. Then if you have the city's blessing for each token you control that's entered the battlefield this turn, create a token that's a copy of it. So you can just see how uh, just degenerate that can be. And then also, this is going to be... Keep in mind, this entire product is for modern. So this seems like a pretty good one-drop non-legendary creature. Looks pretty strong. Set that up there. This might be a longer opening just because this is like about first impressions of the product. Just looking at all the cards, not really just trying to rifle through. We are going to probably have a really nice spread of commons and uncommons, which is the point of this box. This box is for draft. This is a fun enchantment. Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. Put a uh, whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, put a collection counter on this. And if there are three or more on it, sack it. If you do draw a card, you may search your library for a planes. It's a pretty sweet card. Barbarian Ring, Threshold Land. Sacrifice Barbarian Ring. It deals two damage to any target. Activate only if seven or more cards are in your graveyard. Oh, okay. Yes. Another Carador card. Might even build this as a commander. This looks really fun. The Necro Bloom. Into a Tempest Harvester. So two special art cards so far in the first three packs. Two foils in this pack. One is a Swamp and one is a Tempest Harvester. So double foil pack there. You get a token. Whoa. Whoa. Looks like a xenomorph. Secret layer alien. Do it. Monstrous Vortex. Very, very, very strong card. Very excited to play this card. Another MDFC here. This is a Witch Enchanter. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls, or you can have it enter as a Witch Blessed Meadow. Pretty sweet. Big fan of the MDFCs. Got a dragon in here. As long as seven or more cards are in your graveyard, it gets plus three, plus three, and has fire breathing. Emperor of Bones. Another strong card. Look at that. Look at this ability. It's so good. And then a Johnny fells the Godsire. Exile target creature and opponent controls with power three or greater. Create a two one white cat warrior creature token. There's a lot of like cat stuff. I might have to go revisit the Rin and Siri deck. So four foils so far. Keep it going. We got a lot of packs, a lot of packs to get through here. I'd like to hit one of the flares. 
which I probably should, considering they are printed at rare. Mindless Conscription. Prowl in the Implicit Maze. Modified creatures to control of lifelink. That's pretty cool. Oh, a jet medallion. I am a fan of this. The medallions look really nice. This one is pretty sweet with that. That very creepy art. Men. Men for it. Then a devourer of destiny. Big Eldrazi theme in this set, as I'm sure many of you know. You may reveal this card from your opening hand. If you do, at the beginning of your first upkeep, look at the top four cards of your library. You may put one of those cards back on top of your library, exile the rest. It's pretty sweet. And then when you cast a spell, exile target permanent that's one or more colors. Big effects on Eldrazi. Pretty sure I was holding that card right next to the, uh, the camera the whole time. Like these full art cards with the Eldrazi in the background. Then we got an art card here. So the Necrobloom, a Jet Medallion. And we're honestly just getting into it, so. Got a Mog Mop. I like this card. It's a fun cycle. Uh, consuming Corruption. Deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker and you gain X life where X is the number of swamps you control. It's a strong. Goes right in there with those, those big effects like... Uh... Oh, jeez. Losing my train of thought. A second Ocelot Pride. This is going to be an Ocelot Pride box. No, it goes in there with like Exsanguinate and um, Torment of Hailfire, that kind of thing. If you're running a ton of swamps, you should probably run it. Ocelot Pride, two of those. Both Mythic. Yeah, I guess I'll just put my Mythics up here. That's fine. Galvanic Discharge. Let's move this card. Three mythics so far. Let me know in the comments, are you getting a box of this? How do you feel about the new set? Annoyed Altasaur. Like to see that. Spymaster's Vault. The cycle of lands is really spicy. For black in tap, target creature you control connives X, where X is the number of creatures that died this turn. Which means draw X cards, then discard X cards. Put a 1 1 counter on that creature for each non land card discarded this way. Very strong. Very strong ability here. I'm excited that I got one of these. This is on my list stuff that I really want. And then we find an Ajani. This is just a straight up cat box going on here. Find a mythic Ajani into an uncommon snow covered waste. It's pretty sweet. God, that looks awesome, actually. Big fan. Oh, Fanatic of Ronus. I hope this is a, a harbinger of things to come. Card is so pushed. All right. Petrifying meddler. All right, come on. Something something really spicy in here. Let's, uh, we haven't hit a fetch land yet. Fetch land would be cool. Let's get a polluted delta. Feeling a polluted delta. Let's go. Skittering 
Precursor. Whenever you sacrifice a non-token permanent, create a 0-1 colorless Eldr Eldrazi spawn creature token. Sacrifice a creature. Johnny fills the godsire. Another snow-covered waste. Uncommon is deep analysis. We do have a rare. It's a shifting woodland. Okay, so like we were just talking about the connive land. Oh, dude, this land is nutty. Delirium for two green and two other. Shifting woodland becomes a copy of target permanent card in your graveyard until end of turn. Activate only if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. That is very easy to achieve, especially if you're in some graveyard uh, shenanigans. You're like, if you're in dredge, this is going to be really, really fun. I'm going to be putting it in the Carador. This is such a, such a strong card. And then we have a foil petrifying meddler. Awesome. Where I'm not getting fetch lands, I'm excited to be getting these other very powerful lands. Fetch lands are just fun. All right, here we go. Love the art on this. The art on this is just so sick. Quest for the Necropolis. Lith Elemental. Another MDFC. Draw two cards, then discard a card at random unless you pay two. And then we do have on the other side, Crackling Falls. And then we do have an Urza's Incubator. Very nice card. This was printed at Mythic in Dominaria Remastered, but it's nice to see it at Rare. It's such a quality card. Really cool that this is going to be um, modern playable. It's pretty sweet. This is another card that's very good. Flash, Storm. Your opponents get in a nice uh, get a nice stack going, and then you Amphibian Downpour to finish off the rest of the notable creatures on the board. This seems very, very good. I'm a fan. Then we have a Triton Wavebreaker for Bestow. It has Bestow. This is awesome. As long as Triton Wavebreaker is a creature, it has prowess. Shana creature gets plus one, plus one, and has prowess. That's awesome. And then a Foily Plains as well. Pretty spicy so far uh, in the left column here. Two Ocelot Pride. Two of the new land. An Urza's Incubator. Depth of Filer. Fun card. And we have Sink into Stupor. Return target spell or non land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. It's a very fun effect. I didn't realize Reform. Wow. Reform going to be modern playable. Interesting. We have a rare. It is a War and Soul Trader. I am excited about this card. I am a fan of this card. Then a Nyxborn Hydra. War and Soul Trader. Ooh, this Cat Warrior is sick. I love this. Okay. The War and Soul Trader. We made a short about this card, but this card is insane. This is one of the strongest cards in the set. Not even close. It is so, 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 so good. Love it. Two packs left out of that left column. Wow, this is going to be like the longest box opening. Everybody that's like a channel regular is like, yeah, I could have told you. If Jake is opening a 36-pack box, it's going to take him a minute. I just like to take it all in. I like to... I like to bask in the box opening glory. Furnace Hellkite. Actually, I like this Wumpus. Wumpus. Eldrazi Beast. Furnace Hellkite. Ooh, search your library for an instant card. Yes. Yes. At instant speed, no less. And then this is another one I'm very excited about is Junk Diver. All right. I think I'm going to build this. 
been looking at this card and this looks very fun affinity for artifacts when it enters the battlefield you draw x and you lose x life where x is the number of artifacts you control rounded down and so i would just build this in an artifact pile and then you just fling the artifacts once you get this out this is going to be a very fun very chaotic commander and then we do have a thief of existence foil rare devoid when you cast a spell exile up to one target non-creature non-man permanent and opponent controls with mana value four or less if you do thief of existence gains when this creature leaves the battlefield target opponent draws a card this is very good exile up to one target permanent opponent controls with mana value four or less this is good oops and then we have a basic island. All right, last pack, left column. Love this. This is a great meme. Colossal Dread Mask. Worm Coil Larva. This is great. I mean, this is amazing, honestly. Trait Wavebreaker, Heretic Rebirth. This is a very fun card as well. Turn target artifact or creature card from your graveyard to your hand at instant speed, and then you can shoot something. It's awesome. Bogart Trawler. Enters the battlefield, exile target opponent's graveyard. It's very good. It's very good. We have a Cephalid Colosseum. Also at Uncommon into a Mythic. Ooh, what could this be? Red Mythic. 4-4. Four, four. Ashling. Flame Dancer. You don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end and Magecraft whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell discard a card. And draw a card. If this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, Ashling Flame Dancer deals two damage to each opponent and each creature they control. If it's their third time, add four red mana. Okay. All right. It's a pretty fun little mythic. I just realized that I did not um, show off the back of this Ajani here. This is another card that I think is very strong from the set. I mean, these look really nice. I know people are going to be like, are the foils, are the foils nice? I mean, they look at them. The foils look really good. I'm not seeing any sort of like weirdness. Yeah. Foil quality looks good. All right. Getting into the second column here. All right. We need a flare. A flare and a fetch. We get a flare and a fetch land in the same pack. Dog Umbra. This is a fun common. Serum Visionary. Another meme. Titans Vanguard. Just played this in one of the new commander decks. Titans, Titans Vanguard is a fun card, man. On the attack, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each colorless creature you control, and it has trample. It's good. Brain search. Territory color. Strength of the harvest. Getting all these MDFCs. I'm into it. Another uncommon is Shrieking Drake. God, I love that old art. Enters the battlefield. Return a creature you control to its owner's hand. I love that they put visions on there to let players know who might be like wait where is this from it's freaking awesome Ooh, ear gassed erupting null kite we find another mythic joel is pretty excited about this card it has emerge and when you cast this spell you may exile your hand and if you do draw three cards as flying and each creature spell you cast has emerged the emerge cost is equal to its mana cost it's pretty sweet another mythic So just letting people know 
Oh, we found a heart card there. We are currently 13 packs into this box, and we've already hit one mythic, two, three, four, five, six mythics, one of them being a foil. Unless I'm missing anything. I don't think I am. And an Urza's Incubator. Some other really fun cards. Two of these lands. Let's keep it going. God, that art. That art. What do you think of these lands? Kind of mid on them. I mean, it's pretty cool that you can use them until you want to sacrifice them and go get something. Yeah. Honestly, pretty cool. And you can cycle them. Maybe I need to give them a chance. Gonna give those lands a chance. Uh, Sundering Eruption. We have destroy target land and its controller may search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle creatures without flying can't block this turn. This is a great card. This is great. Ooh. This is another card that I do not have a copy of. I am excited. And a flare of malice. Oh, a black flare. You may sacrifice a non-token black creature rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Free spell. Yes. Each opponent sacks a creature or planeswalker with the greatest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control. This is sick. Love to have gotten one of these. This is awesome. And it's the black one. It's like my color. Beam Inferior, the owner of target non-land permanent, puts it into their library second from the top or the bottom. Or on the bottom. God, I am just not a reader today. I'm getting like a... I'm having trouble reading vibe from myself. That full art, Necro Bloom, dude. Excited about that. Jolted Awake. Love this art. Cursed Wombat. Indebted Spirit. Ooh. First retro card of the box. So these are going to be something that appear much more in the collector booster based on my first impression of this. And I'm sure I could find all of that information somewhere else, but I have just not done it. This is what we'll do. No, wait. Yeah, we'll just put this in here. Firewood Symbio. Ooh, and a Volatile Storm Drake in here. This is sick. Very good card. And an accursed marauder. These packs are nice and easy to open. I love it. Glimpse the impossible. It that heralds the end. Propagator drone. Put a 1 1 counter on target creature. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Dude. Dude. It's so good. <laughs> this is so good. Like, oh my god. This is such a good card. Bless you. Nesting Grounds. Move a counter from target permanent you control onto another target permanent. Activate only as a sorcery. That's good. And we have a Party Thrasher. It's a Lizard Wizard. Into a Distinguished Conjurer. And a Foily Swamp. It's pretty sweet.
Evolution Witness, Contaminated Landscape, Commons Ghostfire Slice, The Hunger Tide Rises, Copy Crook, Meltdown, good new card, and a Grist, getting in in the Mythic slot, is pretty cool. Very strong one drop here. Whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, you may pay green. If you do exile Gris, then return it to the battlefield, transform under its owner's control. And it has a nice suite of abilities. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, create a 1-1 one, one black and green insect creature token, then mill two cards, put a death touch, uh, death touch counter on the token if a black card was milled this way. Sweet, very sweet mythic. And then a copy token. So, so far, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mythics in this box. That doesn't even get into the flares. Let's find an uh let's find another flare here. Dog Umbra. Ethereum Terramander. Can block only creatures with flying and it has adapt four. It's pretty cool, uncommon. Emrakul's messenger. Eldrazi Fairy Rogue. So it's such a small Eldrazi, just a little too one. Uh, Suppression Ray. Tap all creatures target player controls. You may pay X energy, then choose up to X creatures. Tap this way, put a stun counter. Ooh, stun counters are so brutal. Then we also have a Cursed Mirror. This is fun. And a Strix Serenade. Very nice uh, rares we're hitting in this box. The Foily Terramander. Expanding ooze. Muster the departed. Breaker of creation. There's this cave. A bespoke battle wagon. Seems like a must run in the energy archetype. Into a buried alive. What do you think of Buried Alive in Modern? That's pretty sweet. And the rare is a Fanatic of Ronus. We found that that token earlier. There it is. And I said hopefully it would be a harbinger of things to come. And we did find the Fanatic. What a strong Mana Dork. Best Mana Dork in history? What do you think? Pretty freaking good. And then a Kami of Jealous Thirst. All right, one, two, three, four, five packs in the middle column here. Left. Grave dig. What a funny meme. They took Grave Digger and they cut it in half and put entwine on it. Vexing Bauble. Metastatic Evangel. Another MDFC here. Three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. This would be like... Just how I draft in Limited. It would be, unless there's a big bomb in the pack, I'm taking this card. I'm going to take that really good removal. That can also be a land if I need it to be. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. 
Wrath of the Skies. Happy to find one of these and then a foily dog umbra. Awesome. Versatile board wipe. This is one of the best cards in the set. Dog Umbra Foil. It's pretty cool too. <clears throat> See you, babe. Thank you for blessing the box. <laughs> yes. All right, let's keep it going here. Aether Spike. This is also a cool little mana dork here. It's no Fanatic of Ronus, or whatever it is. What is it called? Yeah, Fanatic of Ronus. I don't know why we didn't see the Fanatic of Ronus while we were in uh, Amonkhet. But they must have been hiding on the mountains. Ooh, a ruby medallion. This is a fun medallion as well. Can we find the blue one? And a white orchid phantom. This is another card that I think is so sweet. Ooh, foily MDFC. This is pretty sweet as well. Cool. I am into it. So far, a fetch landless box. <laughs> Looking for a fetch. Destroy target creature or planeswalker instant speed. And victimize. Like this. And Emrakul, the world anew. That is a pretty sweet mythic to pull. That is a very, very sweet mythic to pull. Okay, can we go Mythic Mythic? That would be pretty wild. No, we do find a Siege Smash. And a Foily Mountain. And some very awesome art here as well. What is this? Ron Spears. This is the... Um, Primal Prayers. Pretty cool. God, Emrakul. This one is pretty good. When you cast this spell, gain control of all creatures target player controls. Yikes. Not a good card for spell table. Let's just say that. And then flying protection from spells and from permanents that were cast this turn. Yeah, dude. I mean, LTB, sacrifice all creatures you control, and it has madness. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice pull there. I do have the Eldrazi precon, and so that would definitely be a card that goes into that deck. Void Pouncer. Electrozoa. Eldrazi Ravager. Spawn Gang Commander. Rare, we find Shilgengar, Sire of Famine, Elder Demon, Flying, Sacrifice another creature, create a blood token. If you sacked, uh, sacked an angel this way, create a number of blood tokens equal to the toughness instead. Jeez. Sack six blood tokens, return each with the fight. Oh, so this is a, a demon, white black angel deck commander. This is pretty sweet. I like what's going on here. And a foil Titans Vanguard. Pretty cool. All right, 13 packs left. I like how this says close up cam. I like that I left that on there. That's good. 
It's a good choice. Like this kind of card. Things of Colonia. Volt Storm Angel. Unstable Amulet. Blood Soaked Insight. Another MDFC there. Distinguished Conjurer. And our rare is a Chthonian Nightmare. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get three energy and pay X energy, sacrifice a creature, return Chthonian, uh, Chthonian Nightmare to its owner's hand, return target creature card with mana value X from your graveyard to the battlefield, to activate only as a sorcery. That's pretty sweet. It's gotten a lot of very strong black rares in this. All right, 12 packs left. All right, Rowl in the Implicit Maze, uh, Glasswing Grace, a Null Elemental Blast Retro. It's pretty cool. I like that treatment. Counter target multicolored spell, destroy target multicolored permanent for one waste. And a Recruiter of the Guard. Yeah, this is a card that is definitely uh, mythic effect I think this was upshifted to mythic if I had to guess into a rare it is a kudo king among bears other creatures have base power and toughness 2-2 two, two, and are bears in addition to their other types and then we do have another MDFC here Jin monk 2-2 two, two, pinnacle monk uh when Pinnacle Monk enters the battlefield, return to an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand, and it costs five, has prowess, but can also enter as a land. Pretty cool. I am a fan. I'm a fan of all the MDFC support that came out in this. All right. Can we, at this point, I'm like, let's dodge fetch lands let's have a fetch land list box <laughs> split second choose one siege smash this is cool another monstrous vortex i want to foil one of those scurry of gremlins worm coil larva Angel of Ruins. Rare. Is a Kozilix Command. This is pretty fun. I love that exile target creature with mana value X or less. What a strong mode. And we got a foreboding landscape. For our foil. drinking game take a shot every time I say pretty cool like the art on this snapping void craw it's a cute little Eldrazi turtle there Keep in mind, all of these cards are going to be on Arena as well. Planar Genesis. Really good. Really good uncommon there. Furnace Hellkite. Then we do have a Sink into Stupor. MDFC. And a Fledging? Fledgling Dragon. 
Followed by a Crabomination. Oh, this is so appropriate that I would open a Crabomination. Two black and four other emerge from artifact. You may cast this spell by sacrificing an artifact and paying the emerge cost reduced by that artifact's mana value. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent exiles the top card of their library and a card at random from their graveyard and a card at random from their hand. You may cast a spell from among the cards exiled this way without paying its mana cost. It's kind of cool. I feel like if people can get this crab out early, this can be a very punishing effect. Static Prison. This is cool as well. We got a snack. All right. Let's finish up this box opening. We're heading up on an hour on this video. There's not going to be much that I can cut out of this. So if you were just looking for a video where I'm just going to sit there and talk to you the whole time and you're just like, man, I need, I need Jake's voice in my head, then you definitely found the right video for that. Triton Wavebreaker, Path of Annihilation, Rush of Inspiration, Unannoyed Altasaur. This is me in the morning. A mythic. It's an Ulamog the Defiler. Okie doke. So I am just hitting some absolute heat as far as Eldrazi goes. This is extremely, extremely cool. This card is extremely strong. <laughs> um, It's probably the strongest card in the set. What an absolute monster. Actually, it's way worse than a monster. It's way worse than all of the nightmares that you could think. It is. It's an Eldrazi. Foily Serum Visionary. Foily Forest. And a bird. It's a scary bird. All right. So pretty good. Pretty good run of mythics in this box. The Faithful Watchdog. Breathe your last. This is also a spell that I would highly consider taking early on in a dra in a draft. All the cranial rams. Quest for the necropolis. Glyph elemental. A bogart troller. And a pearl medallion. Getting a nice... Nice, uh run of medallions here dodging the green one is cool too and we find a flare a pearl medallion into a flare of cultivation green flare here this one is sacrifice a non-token green creature rather than pay the spell's mana cost and you can search your library for up to two basic land cards reveal those cards put one onto the battlefield tapped in the other into your hand then shuffle even at sorcery speed i am a big fan of these then we do have a Nightshade Dryad Oily. I don't think we've hit a special guest card yet. And still not one fetch land. So the fetch lands are somewhere else. I don't know where they are. But they are not hanging out in this box. One fetch land. All right, we got to get one fetch land or I have to bend the Ulamog. No, I should have never said it. I should have never said it. One fetch land. Now we have steaks. And a lot of steaks to eat. Deep analysis. It's a rare. It's a Nadu winged wisdom. This card is good. This card is good. Joel put this card on my radar. Creatures you control have, whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. This ability triggers only twice each turn. Can't let it do too much. And we find a mythic. It's a Brea. Wow. 
This is pretty freaking awesome. Foily Mythic here. Brea Ethereum Shaper. Do I build this? I mean, this is just, it's so beautiful. So this is now a modern legal card. I had no idea. We're going to set the Mythic up there with the Mythics. And an Aether Tide Whale. I am wondering... I mean, two foil mythics in this box. All right, we got to get one fetch land. That way we don't have to bend the Ulamog. We have six packs left. Wumpus Aberration. Waterlog Teachings. You just give me all of these. I'm into it. Reef Worm. It's a rare. It's a psychic frog. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, draw a card. Discard a card. Put a 1 1 counter on psychic frog. Exile three cards from your graveyard. Psychic frog gains flying until end of turn. I like this frog. What a nice frog. What a wholesome frog. Five packs remain. And then we'll go through everything that we opened here. It's an ooze wag. Vampire. Galvanic Discharge. I deserve an award for making a box opening last an hour. Lion Umbra, Junk Diver. It's an it's it's the new Blue Land. The next spell you cast this turn has Improvise. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you control an island. I mean, this is like there is so much going on here. This card is so strong. Still, not one fetch land in this box. Ulamog is getting nervous. Ulamog is saying, Well, I, there's one thing that I cannot survive. Just being bent in half. <laughs> Love this art. Beautiful art. Also beautiful art. More Justine Jones. All of the Justine Jones, please. Hydroelectric uh, electric Specimen, MDFC. Another Jet Medallion. Double Jet Medallions. Yes! No. It's not a fetch land. Okay. It's an invert polarity. It's a rare. Could, could it be? It's not a fetch land. It's a flare. It's the blue flare. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to complain about this. I am not going to complain about this. This is awesome. We take this. We'll set that. You know what? We'll set that up here. Next to our mythics. Oh, no. Actually, there's a spot for this. It was right here. Let's just move these. We're going to do a count on everything, like we said right at the end. How many rares, how many mythics, all that stuff. Longest video that could possibly exist. Shout out to whoever fell asleep during this video. That's probably what I would have done. Would have eaten like a sandwich. Maybe put this on while I was... Uh... Since Reliquary. Reiterating Bolt. This box is honestly like stacked, dude. Cephalic Coliseum. It's a rare. Could we find a single? No, we're just going to find all of these lands. Watch this be a meme. You either hit this whole cycle or you hit the whole cycle of fetch lands. Because I've hit pretty much all of these except for red. And so 
I'm thinking that you either hit a fetch land box or you hit Oily Island. That's cool. I guess we'll do a foil count at the end as well. Again, the foils look good. Not seeing any sort of like curling or pringling. All right, two packs left. Oops. Levelant Rumble. Curse Marauder. Expel the Unworthy. I don't think we've hit a special guest card either. So maybe there's going to be something spicy here in these last couple packs. We'll see. Signature Slam. An etched slith. Slith. Priest of Titania. I mean, this is a very good mana dork. This or, or Fanatic of Ronus? What do you think as far as best? Springheart Nantuko. And an... Ooh! Foil Rare right at the end. Argent Dias enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it. Whenever two or more creatures attack, put an oil counter on it and remove two from it. Exile target. Exile another target non land permanent. Its controller draws two cards. That's pretty wild. That's pretty good. Oil rare. All right, one pack left in this box, and then we're going to go through how we did. Still looking for that fetch land to save our buddy Ulamog from from the inevitability that is being an Eldrazi. Is it Genitorium? Bridgeworks Battle? Decree of Justice? It's the red. Oh my god, I hit every single one of these. I hit every one of these. I'm not going to bend the Ulamog. I was joking around. But wow. Okay. Let's go through everything that we got here. Pretty wild. For our final breakdown here, we ended with 43 foils that you could see here of all different types. Some of them are like basic lands. Um, but we expected 36 foils minimum. But we ended with 43 foils total and then we ended with two mythic foils which are the brea and the ocelot pride uh and two foil rares which are the thief of existence and the argent dais we had four borderless cards lair of denial jet medallion the necrobloom and kaif three of these were rare and the cave back here was a mythic. And this is from the commander deck. Blue flare, I'm very excited about. Got two total retro cards in the entire box. One was an uncommon, one was a common. We ended with 37 non-foil rares. And I'm honestly really excited with how uh, this turned out. Pearl medallion, the jet medallion, ruby medallion. We got uh, the green flare. We got the black flare. This was a meme that I was saying in the video because I didn't hit one fetch land in this entire box, but I'm still not upset with how the box turned out. I was very excited to get these because I actually already have a lot of the fetch lands. This cycle I collected back during Cons of Tarkir. So getting one of each of these new rare lands, I can't believe I hit all of them. We got the white, the red, the blue, the green, and the black. All of them have very strong effects. We also got an Urza's Incubator in here. The Flute is a really cool card that I'm interested to see how this card turns out. White Orchid Phantom, these are some of the creatures I was the most excited about. Fanatic of Ronas, Volatile Storm Drake as well, Warren Soul Trader. So like I was saying at the top of the video, you get a really nice spread of cards when you go with the Play Booster box. You're not getting all of the blinging shiny variants, even though I did get the very exciting borderless blue flare and three other borderless cards um 
and then we also had the uh, a couple instance and sorceries I was very excited about here. And then this is the rest of the stuff. I'm excited to build this as a commander. I would want to go with like one of the cool variants for this, but I at least have something to brew with. And then some other fun stuff in here. Psychic Frog, Nadu. This is a card that's that looks pretty strong as well. Crabomination, uh, Catholian Nightmare. And, uh, I mean, this is a fun thing to brew with as well. A demon, an elder demon that sacrifices angels. It's kind of cool. Party Thrasher and some other fun stuff. And then for our mythics, like I said, we already got two mythics that were foil. But for non-foil mythics, I was very excited to find the Ulamog, the Emrakul, a Grist, a Unhergast, a Johnny, Ashling, Ocelot Pride, and I got a foil one of these, so I have two Ocelot Pride and a Recruiter of the Guard. Can't go wrong with that. I like the new art as well. So a lot of really fun cards here, 10 Mythics total, and then all of the other stuff that I talked about. Big thank you again to Wizards of the Coast for sending this product. I hope you enjoyed this box opening. I know it took me forever to open it, but it gives you a good idea of what the product is like. I wanted to make sure that you could see exactly how many of each card I pulled, rares, mythics, foils, borderless cards, and all of that. So if you're looking for a really over-the-top pack opening experience, obviously the collector booster is the way to go, but I'm very impressed with the play booster box as well as far as a nice spread of cards that gives me a good idea of the set and I feel like I opened really well in this I know like not all openings are going to be this good but for a box that had zero fetch lands I'm really impressed with how this box turned out and again with this product it has more utility right because we're able to draft with it if we want to get some friends together we can do a draft or if you want to just have a fun opening experience this is a way to go that is cheaper than the collector booster experience hope you enjoyed this video thank you again for spending your time with us i'm jake goodbye until next time see you later